Here's the third video in my series of videos on derivatives. The first couple videos were on power rule and product rule, so make sure you've learned those before watching this video. This rule is on the derivative of a quotient. original function h at x equals the quotient of two functions f at, x and, f at x and g at x, the derivative of h at x would equal the derivative of the top function times the bottom function minus the derivative of the bottom function times the top function all over the bottom function squared. So all over function g at x squared. So in this video, we are going to look at how to apply this rule when taking the derivative of a quotient of two functions. So let's do a couple practice questions to make sure we know how to use the rule. So if this is our original function, f at x, and it's equal to the quotient of 3x minus 4 divided by x squared plus 5, the derivative would equal the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of 3x minus 4 is 3 multiplied by the bottom function. So you leave the bottom function the same. We find that product. Then we subtract the product of the derivative of the bottom function. So the derivative of x squared plus 5 is 2x multiplied by the top function. And then we divide that by the bottom function squared. So we divide that by x squared plus 5 squared. And then we should simplify it. So this is the equation of the derivative. That'll tell us the instantaneous rate of change at any value of x we want. But we should simplify the numerator. So um, we should look to expand and collect any like terms we've got here. So f prime of x equals, let's expand the 3 into the x squared plus 5 and the negative 2x into the 3x minus 4. And we'd have 3x squared plus 15 minus 6x squared plus 8x. All over the bottom function squared. Now the bottom function is in our, our denominator is in fully factored form already, so we can just leave that. We're not going to bother expanding that. In our numerator, the like terms I have to collect, I have a 3x squared minus 6x squared. That's negative 3x squared. And then I just have my 8x and my 15. So there we go. There's my numerator fully simplified. And x squared plus 5 squared, there's my denominator. So there's the equation of the derivative. I mean, you could check and see if the numerator factors and if those either of those factors would simplify with the denominator, but in this case they don't. And just a quick reminder, if you want to check if a quadratic factors, just check the discriminant and see if the discriminant's a perfect square number. So 8 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 15 so that's my b squared minus 4ac. It's 244. If that was a perfect squared number, that means it would factor. And that's not a perfect squared number, so it doesn't factor. This is as simple as my derivative is going to get. Let's practice another one. Let's find the derivative of this function, where this is a quotient of 6x minus 5 divided by x cubed plus 4. So if we want the derivative, it's equal to the derivative of the numerator, which is 6, multiplied by the denominator, the function in the denominator, so the bottom function, x cubed plus 4. And then we subtract the derivative of the function in the denominator, so the bottom function, so we get 3x squared, multiplied by the function in the numerator, the top function, 6x minus 5, all over the bottom function squared, so all over x cubed plus 4 squared. And now we can go ahead and simplify our numerator by expanding and collecting, and then we have the equation of our, our derivative. So we have 6x cubed plus 24. So right now I'm expanding the 6 in. Now I'm going to expand in the negative 3x squared. Negative 3x squared times 6x is going to give me negative 18x cubed plus 15x squared. And just leave our denominator. And we can collect any like terms we have. Uh, I've got 6x cubed minus 18x cubed, that's negative 12x cubed, plus 15x squared, plus 24. Uh, and then my denominator, x cubed plus 4 squared. Now my numerator, I suppose I could take it a common factor of 3 if I wanted to. Uh, it's not going to help me simplify anything with the denominator, so I'm just going to leave that as my final answer. 
So let's look at an application of this. So find the point or points on this function, which is a quotient of two functions, 2x plus 8 divided by root x, where the tangent slope is horizontal. Okay, so that basically means, this, this is just saying, uh, at what points is h prime of x equal to 0, right? The derivative tells you the slope of the tangent, and for a tangent to be horizontal, it means it has a slope of 0. So we want to know when is h prime of x equal to 0. So let's start by finding the equation of the derivative. So let's start by finding h prime of x. Oh, and it also may help if you think of root x, if you rewrite that with a rational exponent, it's the same thing as x to the half. Okay, here we go. So if we want to find the derivative of h of x, we do the derivative of the function in the top. So the derivative of 2x plus 8 is 2. Multiply that by the bottom function. So multiply that by root x. And then we subtract the derivative of the function in the denominator. So derivative of that, you take use the power rule. Take the half, write it as the coefficient. And then subtract 1 from the exponent. So a half minus 1 is negative a half and then multiply that by the function in the numerator, 2x plus 8. I can draw a better line than that. And we'll divide all of that by the function in the denominator squared. Oh, root x squared, that's just x, that works out nicely. Okay, so what do we have here? Let me rewrite this a little bit. So I've got 2 root x, minus, and then I'm just going to take this power and move it to the denominator of that fraction to make the exponent positive. So minus 1 over 2 root x times 2x plus 8 all over x. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to rationalize this denominator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this function um, top and bottom by root x. So I'm going to multiply this by root x over root x. And that's actually going to simplify this equation for us. Right? Root x over root x is just 1, so I'm allowed to do that. And just watch what happens when I do this, and you'll see why I've chosen to do this. So the whole numerator needs to be multiplied by root x, and the whole denominator. So when I multiply the whole numerator by root x, that means both terms in the numerator get multiplied by root x. So I would have 2 root x times root x. Well, root x times root x is x. So that just leaves me with 2x. And this function, when I multiply it by root x, I would get root x over 2 root x. The root x's will cancel, and I'll just have a half of 2x plus 8. And what's a half of 2x plus 8? Well, I'll just divide the 2x and the 8 by 2, or distribute it in, and we get x plus 4. So this is just minus x plus 4 all over x root x, all over x, and root x, I'll rewrite that as x to the half. So what I have here, I have in the numerator 2x minus x, that's x, minus 4, over multiplying two powers to the same base, add the exponents, 1 plus a half is 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, and there's the equation of my derivative. Once I have the equation of the derivative, we establish that what we want to do is we want to figure out when is this derivative equal to 0? When is the tangent slope equal to 0? So set it equal to 0. And in order for a fraction to be equal to 0, all, we have, all we're really worried about is what makes the numerator become 0. So when is x minus 4 equal to 0? Because if x minus 4 equals 0, 0 divided by anything is 0, so that tells us our answer here. So solve this equation, x equals 4. So the x-coordinate of a point on the original function that will have a tangent slope of 0 is 4. We'll also want the y-coordinate, so we're actually going to need to figure out, well, what is h at 4? And let's look back at our original function, h at x. It's 2x plus 8 over root x. So 2x plus 8 over root x, and I subbed in 4 for my x's. And that gives me 16 over 2, 8. So the point on my, on my original function as a tangent slope of 0 should be the point 4, 8. And let's verify this graphically. Let's take a look at Desmos here. I've graphed the original function. That's function h at x. And we said the point 4, 8 has a horizontal tangent slope. So if I were to draw a horizontal line through that point, so that would be the equation y equals 8, it should touch the function at that one spot. And there we go. Look how that, 
that point has a horizontal tangent slope. Right? That point right there, that point 48, a tangent to that point would be completely horizontal. So we just verified our answer. All right, make sure you watch the next lesson on chain rule. Uh, that's where we're going to get to apply everything that we've done so far.